keep it going. Thank you, Lord, for your testimony.
praise the hallelujah. I raise the hallelujah. Oh, I raise the hallelujah. Oh, you can only raise your own hallelujah. I raise the hallelujah. Oh, raise that hallelujah to our Father. I raise the hallelujah. Oh, I raise the hallelujah. That is 
That is who you are. 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 That 
searching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You're healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. Brother Jeff, can you come and share a little bit from this morning Sunday school? My mind won't leave what we learned this morning in Sunday school. He goes before me and after me, and his hand is upon me. Beautiful lesson this morning. The Lord gave Brother Jeff. Whatever you feel from the Lord, brother. Sitting back there thinking while they were singing Waymaker. We would use probably another term for it that I've read. We use the word sometimes trailblazer. You know, and trailblazers were guys that would go out as we began to settle our country, as we would begin to send people into unknown areas and unknown lands and unknown places. And they would take these guys that were very 
crafty and very skilled and very cunning uh, adventurers and all, and they would send them out ahead of the pioneers and, and all, and they would, they would spy out the land and they would find the path through the, uh, through the woods and, and over the rivers and, and across the valley and, and all that, and they would, they would trailblaze. They would go through and they would mark trees sometimes and they'd cut notches in them. And sometimes they would stack up rocks uh, to serve as markers. And, and sometimes they would tie things around trees. And they, they had all these little t things that they would do. But their whole job as a trailblazer, as a way maker, was to plot a path, a safe path, through this unknown land. Now take and apply that spiritually. You know, a lot of times we find ourselves in places that we don't know this place. Amen. We've never been here before. And we look at it and it looks impregnable. It looks foreboding. It looks like something, you know, and we sit there and we look at it and we think, Lord, how am I going to get from here to there. Amen. How am I going to do that? Well, there was the other the other side of trailblazing was as these pioneers be, you had to be looking for the signs. Amen. You couldn't just stumble stumble around not paying any attention because you had to be looking for these marked trees. And you had to be looking for the little path through the through the woods. You had to be looking for the stacked rocks. You had to be looking for the signs that the trailblazer had left behind. You know, I have a feeling that there are some people in our body tonight that they're sitting there looking at where they're at and where they feel like they need to be. And yet they don't know how to get there. They don't know how to get there. But the reality is that Christ as our trailblazer, the Holy Spirit as our God. If we will start to look for the signs, if we'll start to follow the trail that he has set out for us, we will be able to get from where we are to where we need to be. But we have to be attentive to the signs that he's left behind. We have to be looking with our eyes wide open. This is not something that we can stumble through. If we're not paying attention, we'll stumble into the hole or the pit. We'll cross the river at the wrong place and be washed away. But if you are experiencing something, you, you, you're looking right now saying, how do I get from where I am to where I need to be? Can I encourage you start looking for the signs? Start seeking out the signs that Christ has provided us through His Word. Start being attentive to the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit. And you can make it to where God wants you to be. And you can get there safely and in one piece. Amen? Amen. Amen.
He's my comfort, always holds me close. He always guides me through mountains and valleys. His joy is refreshing.
there's not a mountain too tall there's not a problem so small that jesus can't resolve in time he'll get involved he's our god he cares about us so wait on the lord wait on the lord wait I'm not turning back now. I'm not turning back now. I'm not turning back now. I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. I'm not turning back now. 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 I'm not tur
I'm not turning back now. I'm not turning back now. I'm not turning back now. So I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. 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 I'm not turning back now. 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 Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait. Just wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord, and He'll renew your strength. There's not a mountain too tall. There's not a problem so small that Jesus can't resolve. In time, he'll get involved. He's our God. He cares about us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, Jesus, we feel you in this place. Hallelujah. Lord, that your will would be done is our prayer. That you would increase and we would decrease. That Jesus would be glorified in this place. Lord, in this church, only you shine. In this church, no man shines. Only Jesus shines. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord laid a message on my heart. And to be honest with you, I told the Lord, Lord, I don't want to preach that. I said, Lord, that does not go with what I plan to preach. And when Brother Jeff came up here, I was a little relieved. I said, thank you, Jesus. I said, Lord, thank you that you're going to take this, the service in a different direction. Amen. I was a little relieved, if you know what I mean. But then as I'm sitting there worshiping the Lord, I just keep hearing the Lord preach the word. I said, Lord, these are some of the best people in all of Odessa. 99.9% .9 of Odessa is at home. These people love you. And these people are here because they love you. I felt like the Lord said, son, you don't understand what I'm trying to do. And you don't have to understand. You just preach the word that I laid on your heart. That's all I've ever called you to do. Hallelujah. I want to try to obey God tonight. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, help me. Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. Jesus, help us. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. If you have it and if you can, stand for the reading of God's word. Hallelujah. Yes, 
I hope you understand by this time that I'm not here for the money. Amen. I'm not here to be applauded or for my name to be put in lights. But I'm here to preach the word of God to you, church. Amen. I'm here to preach the word of God. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Skip down to verse 46. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Lord Jesus, I need your help, dear God. Lord, you know that I have butterflies in my stomach because I know what's in these pages that you gave me, dear God. Lord, I am with some of the best people in all of Odessa, but I don't understand your ways, dear God. I don't have to understand them. Lord, I don't know if somebody needs to hear this tonight, Lord, or maybe some other night. But, Lord, in obedience to you, I preach the word that you laid on my heart. Lord, let your word accomplish what only your word can accomplish, Lord. God, that it would produce life is our prayer in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen, amen and Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord laid on my heart this evening. Junior, I want you to preach on the topic of hell. Now, this is a topic that is not very mentioned in America. This is a topic that if you look around in Christian circles, you will find out that most pastors refuse to mention the topic of hell. In fact, it's difficult to find a mainline pastor that has a following that has a big church, it's difficult to find one that will preach on the topic of hell. I saw as they uh, interviewed America's number one pastor in terms of how many people go to his church here in Texas, in Houston, Texas. And they asked him the question, why don't you preach on the topic of hell? He looked at that reporter with a big smile and he said, God is not in the condemning business. He said, people already feel guilty enough, and I want them to come to my church, and I want them to be lifted up. I want them to feel good about themselves. I don't want them to be beat down. The truth is that Pentecost is changing. The truth is that the Pentecostal churches are no longer what they used to be. There was a day when hell was a very common topic in the church. There was a day it, when, when in any Pentecostal church, in any church of God, you would go in and almost hear the same message. We would always hear hell coming from the pulpit. Ray Hughes is a formal general overseer of the church of God. He's the only man in the history of our den denomination that was voted to be the general overseer three different times. He said this about the subject of hell. He said, today hell is nothing but a cuss word to the world and less than that to the church. He said that over 30 years ago, church, I want to proclaim to you today that hell is one of the most unpopular subjects that is coming from the pulpits of America, but it must be brought back again. We must proclaim that hell is real, and we must proclaim that every single day people are going to that place called hell. Preacher, why do you want to scare us? Why do you have to be a doom and gloom preacher? Why can't you do like that man and just have a big smile and tell us that Jesus loves us the way we are? See, the truth is, if you're heaven bound, I want you to feel comfortable. But if you're hell bound, I want to make you as uncomfortable as possible. In this church, we don't want you to feel good if you're on your way to hell. If you're on your way to hell, it is my job to shake you up, to wake you up, and to tell you you're headed in the wrong direction. There's three reasons that I believe that hell needs to come back to our pulpits. Number one, if you believe in hell, you will have an appreciation for your salvation. Yeah. 
you will understand that Jesus rescued you from that path headed towards eternal destruction and it will make you feel gratitude in your heart because you'll understand that you were saved from that place called hell. Number two, if we preach on hell, we will have a healthy fear of God in our churches again. We will have a healthy fear and a respect towards Almighty God. We will have reverence towards Him and we will not want to fail Him. Hallelujah. Thirdly, if we bring back hell to the pulpits, if we, can, if we start to preach hell again, it will give us a passion for the lost. It will give us a passion for those that are on their way to hell. 2 Corinthians 5.11 says, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Hallelujah. When we catch a glimpse of the terror of hell, hallelujah, it causes us to persuade men. Because we know where they're going. You come to somebody and say, Jesus wants you to be saved. And they say to you, saved from what? Yeah. Saved from what? Saved from hell. I want to describe to you today what the Bible says about hell. And I want to tell you the enemy knows exactly what he's doing, by the way. The enemy knows that if he can convince the church that there is no hell, he will destroy America. If he can convince us that there is no hell, then he, there is nothing to worry about anymore. Why live a holy life? Why live a life consecrated to God? Hallelujah. See, this is what the devil will say. He'll hop on your shoulder. He'll hop on my shoulder. And he'll say, there is no hell. He'll say, that preacher just wants to control you with fear. That preacher just wants to have his thumb on your life and he wants to control you. The reality is there is no punishment for sin. God understands you're a sinner anyway. God made you and God winks at your sin. The devil will come by and tell people hell doesn't exist. In fact, if you're looking around on the internet, if you just search for the words how many times is hell mentioned in the Bible? This is what you will get. According to the consensus opinion of modern Bible scholars, the word hell does not appear a single time, not even once in the Hebrew Bible. And the word hell is very hard to find in the New Testament. That's a lie. Amen. That's a bold-faced lie. I don't know who these modern Bible scholars are. I don't care what their consist, consensus opinion may be. The reality is that 29 times in the King James Version of the Bible, we read the word hell. And many more times than that, we hear and we read about eternal punishment. We read about the lake of fire that burns forever and ever and ever. Does the church still believe in hell? I heard about an atheist in the 1930s. It was going around from train station to train station. He would get off in a public uh, square and he would get off and he would begin to preach to the people. This is what he was saying. He was telling them there is no God. He was telling them God is not real. Religion is just trying to control you. This man was an atheist and he didn't re probably know it, but he was, re he was preaching his own religion. Amen. And he was trying to convince the masses that God is not real. And there was a group of pastors in one of the cities. They got together. They got angry at the man and they came to him. They said, we want you to take the next bus out of our town. We want you to leave. You're preaching nothing but lies. And he told them, at least I believe in what I preach. At least I'm out here doing something about what I believe. For if you really believe that there was a hell, if you really believe that there was eternal punishment, you would be out in the streets and you would be proclaiming it to everybody. You don't believe in what you say you believe. Your actions say otherwise. Amen. And beloved, I believe today that the church no longer believes in hell. I believe that our actions tell us otherwise. I believe and I see the church world around us. We patty cake with sin. We're so unstable. One day we're up and the next day we're down. One day we're in and the next day we're out. One day we're in revival. The next day we don't even know if we're saved. Hallelujah. We're so unstable. If we believed in hell, we would get rooted in God. And we would say, Lord, I want to be more passionate about my walk with you. I want to be serious about my relationship with you. If we believed in hell, we would be more harvest oriented. 
If we believed in hell, we could not sit in our, in our comfortable pew while millions of people are going to hell. 150,000 people die every single day while you and I ride the comfortable pew. If we believed in hell, it would push us to do something. We would be out in the streets of Odessa telling people about it. See, if we believe in hell, it will cause us to do some things. It will cause us to be concerned about people's soul. It will cause us to lose sleep over them going to hell every single day. Are we even concerned about them? Do we even lose sleep about them? When we're in prayer meeting and the, the, those, that list of, 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 of families is brought up that are on their way to hell, does it even break your heart? Do you even realize that that is a soul that's on its way to hell? See, many people... They just haphazardly go through Christianity. Oh, well, that's the preacher's job. That's somebody else's job. But God is saying tonight, if hell is real, start acting like it. If you believe it, make it do something to the way that you think. Amen. Hallelujah. Today I want to preach to you for just a little while about some questions that I believe the Holy Ghost wants me to answer. Number one, preacher, why do you believe in hell? Number two, preacher, what is hell like? Number three, preacher, who do men, what kind of men go there? Number four, preacher, who goes to hell and who was it made for? Hallelujah. Question number one, preacher, why do you believe in hell? The standard logical answer is because the word of God proclaims it. Amen. The standard answer is because Jesus in the word of God said it. Hallelujah. But what if that person doesn't believe in the Bible? What if that person doesn't believe that the word of God is the word of God? I want to tell you today, the number one reason why I believe in hell is because all my God is a righteous judge and he must punish sin. Amen. Unrepentant sin will follow you wherever you go. Yes. Unrepentant sin is like a storm cloud that is just getting darker and darker and it's hanging over your head and wherever you go it's just getting darker and darker and it's just a matter of time before lightning will strike and you'll find yourself in a position of death hallelujah a sin that is unrepentant I'm not talking about repented sin amen when you repented of your sin you've come clean before God that those things the Bible says God doesn't even remember them he won't bring them to your remembrance hallelujah but I'm talking about unrepentant blatant sin when you walk around with unrepentant sin, it's like a bank account that you have with no funds in it. And sure, you keep writing hot checks and you keep getting things with these hot checks. But the day will come when the authorities will arrest you and you'll find yourself in prison because that bank account had insufficient funds. My friend, secret sin will never ever be forgotten by God. You may forget your secret sin. Your friends may forget your secret sin. The pastor may never know your secret sin. Sin. But Almighty God, He knows every single sin that you and I have committed. Amen. See, there's many people that in, in churches just like this one, many people that have laughed at me, they've laughed at sin, they've made light of it, they've made fun of Christians, hallelujah. You can sit there, you can laugh at sin, you can just laugh off my sermon as if it's just a joke, hallelujah. But you cannot find a place where Almighty God will forget your sin, hallelujah. You can lie to yourself and pretend like sin doesn't exist. You can lie to yourself and pretend like God just winks at sin. But the reality is that Almighty God must punish sin. See, imagine if somebody broke into your house in the middle of the night, Brother Lewis. Imagine if you're in the middle of the night and all of a sudden you find yourself with handcuffs on you hallelujah an enemy has come in he's restrained you you did not even know how he got in but he's restrained you hallelujah and just imagine brother Lewis if one by one imagine this men we men we love our families hallelujah any right minded man will love his family and he'll defend them with their life hallelujah but just imagine if an enemy came in in the middle of the night and he began to hurt your family in front of you I mean you're restrained you can't 
can't do anything about it. But he goes and he takes the life of every single one of your children in front of your face. And then he brings your wife out and he, he abuses her and he, he, he does all manner of evil to her in front of you. Then he takes, his, takes her life, hallelujah, and off he goes. And for some reason you survive and time goes by. And that man is caught and he's brought before the judge. And you're standing there before that judge. And then the judge says, what do you have to say about your, your penalty? Hallelujah. He looks at the judge and he says, sir, I'm a real good guy. I mean, sure, I, I, I caused some problems that day. I was a little bit, you know, not right minded. But you can ask all my friends and family. I'm a good guy. I mean, I just made a mistake. I'll never do it again, sir. It was just an error one night that I made a mistake, but I'm really a good guy. If you just let me go, I'll never do it again. Now, what would you do if that judge just hits the gavel on the desk and he says, okay, this is dismissed. I mean, he's obviously sorry. He's a good guy. He said it himself. Let him go. Now, would that be a righteous judge? Would that be a righteous judge? Absolutely not. I want to tell you tonight, Almighty God is a righteous judge. And because He's a righteous judge, He has to punish sin. He has to punish every single unrepentant sin in every human's life. See, God is a righteous judge. He will punish sin. Just imagine, look at what Odessa has become, church. Look at what Odessa has become. Did you know that Texas Monthly uh, posted an article that the FBI's most dangerous city in Texas is Odessa? Yeah. Did you know that? Did you know that there's been a 75.5% increase in, 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 in crime in the last 10 years? Did you know that just the other, just last year, August 29th, a 7-year-old little girl was forced to jump on a trampoline in 110 degree weather by her parents? They had to have been on drugs because I don't understand how they could do this to their 7-year-old daughter. She was crying out for water because she was thirsty. They refused to let her drink. They made her jump on that trampoline as punishment until the little girl collapsed and died when the when the paramedics got there she was dead I mean how can you do that church how can you allow your seven-year-old daughter to die hallelujah just the other day a young lady 25 years old named Brittany Martinez in Odessa was murdered in her home by a 20 year old man he went in there and shot the, uh, this girl and her boyfriend hallelujah what's going on in Odessa there's hell going on in our streets see if there was more hell coming from behind the pulpit I believe there would be less hell in the streets of Odessa. Amen. If there was more hell coming from behind the pulpits of America, I believe America would be safer. Hallelujah. Reason number two that I believe in hell is because Almighty God owes it to the righteous. Amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, I sat there that day. Hallelujah. When Sister Dancer was dying of cancer. Hallelujah. I went to go see her. I did my best to see her as much as possible. And I saw her with her frail little body as she was laying there in that bed dying of cancer. But you know, she looked over at her granddaughter, Diane. And she said, baby, I want you to write the pastor my tithe check. Because I don't want to be wrong with my God. Diane reached over and got Sister Dancer's checkbook. And she wrote a check for $80 to the Grand View Church of God. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. You talk about a righteous woman. You talk about a woman that made a clean cut with the world. You talk about a woman that got saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Now I'm telling you tonight, there's some awesome people. There's some men of God, women of God on this earth that have made a clean cut with the world. They're not playing with God. They're serving Him with all their heart. They are living for Him. And do you think that God Almighty is going to let them go into eternity with somebody that hates God? No. Why does God, why is there a hell? Because Almighty God, He owes it to the righteous. He owes it to the sister dancers. He owes it to the brother Tommy Goods. He owes it to the brother Robert Daltons. And every saint of God that has gone on before us, He owes it to them for them to spend eternity away from that trash that refuses God. 
See, here's what I'm trying to tell you. I am a loving father. I love my children. They are my life, my family, my wife. She's my life. Hallelujah. And if I was there at 1665 Trail Drive, and in the middle of the day, somebody knocks on the door, and I look through that little window, and it's Cardi B, that woman. Hallelujah. I promise you, she will not come into 1665 Trail Drive. I won't allow that trash in my house. Hallelujah. What if it's Puff Daddy or Dr. Dre or any of those other bozos, I promise you, they will not come into my house. If Nancy Pelosi knocks on my door, she will not come into my house. If all these demon-possessed rappers, hallelujah, like that bozo that made those Nike shoes with 666 and sprinkled blood on them, and he's trying to poison the minds of all of our children. If that man, that homosexual black rapper, hallelujah, came and knocked on my door, he would not come in. Why? Because because I love my children. Amen. And I will protect them even with my life. Amen. Oh, I don't know if you're understanding me today. Me being an earthly father, I would never put my children in a position where they could be compromised or corrupted by these evil God-hating men. I would never put them in that position. Why do we think that God would let eternity go on and with people like that being in the same place as us? God won't do it. Amen. He won't do it. You say, preacher, do you have any proof? In the word of God, the Bible tells us that the tares and the wheat are growing in the same field today. But the day is coming when the wheat will be gathered into the barn and the tares will be cast into the fire. The Bible tells us about the good fish and the bad fish. Oh, they're in the net together today. But a separation is coming. The good fish will be taken to a place. The bad fish will be taken to another place. The goat and the sheep, they're in the field together. They look good from far away. They seem that they're the same. But there's coming a separation. I'm telling you, God Almighty loves His children so much he will not let us go into eternity with those kinds of people Amen. Now, just so you know I'm not saying that I hate those people personally okay I'm not saying that I hate Cardi B personally or any of these people but I hate what they stand for I hate their message to our children I hate the fact that they are corrupting, hallelujah, our children. That man, that evil man with that horrible, horrible video, hallelujah. I don't even want to say his name because I don't want any of our children to go look him up. But he's of the devil. He is of the devil. And there, oh my goodness, I better go on, hallelujah. But what is hell like? Hell like, hell is not just a state of mind. Hell is not just a grave where you just quit living. Hell is not, you just put them in the grave and that's it. They're, you're an animal and there's nothing else. No. But the Bible teaches in Matthew chapter 10 verse 28. Fear him which is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. When you get to hell or when any human being gets to hell, you will find out that you will have a physical body that is able to feel pain and is able to feel all all pain sensors, they all work in that body. Hallelujah. In Matthew, excuse me, Luke chapter 16, there was a rich man that found himself in hell. And the Bible shows us a glimpse of this man. It says that he had eye. He could see, amen. He knew where he was at. That tells us his eyes worked. And then the Bible says that he wanted water. This tells us he had a mouth. This tells us he had a tongue. This tells us he had his five senses. He was thirsty in that place called hell. Hallelujah. He wanted water. I tell you tonight, all men and all women that open their eyes in the kingdom of hell, all five of their senses work. All five of their senses work. They can smell. They can taste. They can touch. They can do all those things. And you know what I believe is so vivid in those people's minds today is they have a memory. I believe that when you're in hell, your memory works like never before. I believe those people, when they're in hell, they're in their right mind. They can think, hallelujah. I believe they can remember their family that was left behind. You say, preacher, how do you know that? This rich man, he told Abraham, why don't you send somebody for my family? Because they're still there. I don't want them to come here. This tells me that when you're in hell, you can think about your family. I believe you can remember all the sermons you heard like this one. I believe you can remember all the times that God knocked on the door of your heart and you rejected see the bible tells us that there's different degrees of punishment in hell 
Matthew 23, 14. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Inferring that there's a different degree of punishment in hell. See, God is a righteous judge. And Hitler and Stalin and Bin Laden and Saddam Hussein, hallelujah. They're all being punished today for what they've done. All those people have their place in hell. Matthew chapter 10 verse 15. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. I believe what God was saying is, Odessa, open your eyes. Sodom and Gomorrah didn't have a Holy Ghost filled church to go to. Sodom and Gomorrah didn't have the word of God that you and I have. Sodom and Gomorrah didn't have churches on every corner. But yet you do. And it will be more tolerable on that day for Sodom and Gomorrah than for you. Hebrews 10, 28. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall be, th- th- shall be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. The Bible saying how much punishment do you think is coming to a person that knew better, that experienced the salvation of God yet they trampled the blood of Jesus and walked away from Him. The Bible is saying their damnation will be great. Amen. Let me tell you, no level in hell is going to be tolerable. There's some things you'll never find in hell. Some things you'll never find in hell. We see people all over the media, all over our government, all over everywhere, Sister Dina, that they have the attitude of blank Jesus, curse Jesus. I mean, we see them. They don't want anything to do with God. I saw a lady the other day in government. I mean, this was a person in a, in a high position of government. She was saying, I don't want anything to do with any God of any Bible. You Bible thumpers need to shut up. You need to leave us alone. Quit talking about your dumb God. Your dumb God doesn't exist. We see it time and time again, people spitting in the face of our God. People saying, Jesus needs to just leave me alone. I want to do my own thing. I want to tell you hell is the place where that prayer is answered. Hallelujah. Hell is the place where God says, okay, you want nothing to do with me? You can have it. Hallelujah. Hell is completely absent of God. Nothing of God is in hell. But here's the thing you should know. If God isn't there, neither are His attributes. See, we know God is good. Therefore, there's nothing good in hell. We know God is love. Nobody experiences love in hell. We know that God is peace. There's nobody in hell that has peace this evening. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 17 verse 28. For in Him we live and we move and we have our being. Did you know that motion is a gift of God? Did you know that we can get up in the morning with energy, with motion? It comes from God. But I'll tell you this evening, nobody in hell has energy. Nobody in hell has strength. Nobody in hell has power of any sort why God is not there Isaiah 14 verse 9 hell from beneath is moved to meet thee at thy coming and they shall speak and say unto thee art thou become weak as we art thou become like unto us your first day in hell people will ask you art thou become weak as we You came down to this place of no strength. Hallelujah. Psalms 88 and 4. I am counted with them that go down to the pit. I am as a man that hath no strength. The hell bound man has no strength. He has no energy. He has no movement. Why? Because that is a gift from God. And God is not there. And neither are any of his attributes. Leviticus 17 11. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. Life of the flesh is in the blood. It's the blood that gives you life. It's the blood that gives you life. But you know what? God is life. There is no life in hell. There is no life in hell. In fact, it is completely void of the life-giving flow of the blood of Jesus. There is no life in hell. Hallelujah. Zechariah 9:11. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein there is no water. You want to know what else there's not in hell? There are, there's absolutely no fluids in the kingdom of hell. There's no water in the kingdom of hell. That rich man, when he found himself in hell, he wanted just one drop of water to be put on his tongue. 
tongue. You say, preacher, why just one drop? Because one drop of water is like a river of the most clear water you've ever tasted. And it will never, ever come. Never. That rich man. Jesus talked about him over 2,000 years ago. And I tell you this evening, under the unction of the Holy Ghost, he's still there wishing that he had one drop of water. And it's never coming. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm telling you, my friend, I've seen many people that are crossing over, going to the other side. And inevitably, they'll say, I'm thirsty. Give me some water to drink. And they'll even bring a sponge and they'll put it in their mouth. And I ask myself, is that the last drink that they'll ever have for all of eternity? When Christ, he offers us heaven. And he says, there's a river of clear crystal water. Prepared for you. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, heaven promises a crystal clear river of life, but hell is void of all moisture. Hallelujah. What else is there not in hell? Hell is void of light. First John chapter 1 verse 5. God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. Hell has not a single ray of light in it. Hell is darkness. Lamentations 3 and 6. He hath sent me in dark places as they that be dead of old. Jude chapter 13. To whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Only penetrating darkness is found in that kingdom of hell. Contrast that with heaven where the Bible says that heaven is a darkless day for all of eternity but hell is a lightless eternity. Amen. See darkness removes all personalities in hell. Nobody in hell is famous. Nobody in hell is partying this evening. Nobody in hell is having a good time. Selena and Tupac and the Beatles are not up there, you know, playing their songs and dancing to Bidi Bidi Bam Bam and having a ball. Amen? They're not. Hell is dark. Hell is void of light. What else is hell void of? It's void of peace. The Bible calls Jesus the Prince of Peace. Romans 14, 17, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Well, I've got news for you. God is not there. There is no peace. There is no joy. Nobody smiles in hell. Nobody has a good day in hell. Nobody has peace in hell. That rich man in Luke chapter 16, his biggest torment was knowing that his family would one day be there. His biggest torment is that his family would soon be there in that place of torment. And you know what? That caused him to not have any peace. See, hell is a state of terror day and night, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's a panic. You talk about a panic attack. You don't know what a panic attack is until you enter into that place called hell. Hell is a place where terror constantly reigns in your heart forever and ever and ever. Why? They understand that that place they found themselves in it's eternal there is no hope nobody's coming to rescue you you'll be there for all of eternity Amen. the calvary's never coming Nobody's coming to the rescue. Job chapter 7 verse 9. As the cloud is consumed and banisheth away, so is he that goeth down to the grave. He shall come up no more. There is no hope in hell. Amen. There's no fellowship in hell. You'll never have a pleasant conversation with somebody in hell. The only sounds you'll hear in hell is the wailing cries of pain and the gnashing teeth of the people that are there. Ecclesiastes 9.10 For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. Nobody has purpose in hell. Nobody has anything to live for in hell. Nobody enjoys a position or recognition from men in hell. Nobody has a destiny. It's just a useless wasting away. There's absolutely no recognition from man in hell. Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Come unto me, all ye that are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. Did you know that rest comes from God? Yeah. Did you know that when you lay down at night, you're worn out, you're tired? Yeah. And thank the Lord we have a peaceful sleep at night. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing better in the whole world than your bed. Amen? Just be away on vacation for about a week. 
And then you and come home and you'll see what I'm talking about. Rest is a gift from God. Jesus said, come unto me, I'll give you rest. Hallelujah. But did you know that there is no rest in hell? Did you know that there's not anybody that ever gets refreshed in the kingdom of hell? Did you know that everybody in hell is restless? Everybody in hell is tired. Hallelujah. They will never enjoy a good night's sleep. Hell is a place where there is no rest. The Bible said, and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night. They have no rest. Isaiah 57, 20, but the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest. There is no rest in hell. Nobody sleeps in hell. Nobody relaxes in hell. Nobody gets refreshed. What about hope? Nobody in hell can experience hope. Nobody in hell today has hope for tomorrow. See, we here on earth, no matter what we're going through, there's always hope for tomorrow, Brother Lewis. You can be sick, sick, sick in a bed, but there's always hope that God can heal you and you can stand up and walk away from that hospital bed. I mean, no matter what you're going through, there's always hope for tomorrow, but not in hell. There is no hope. There's no more to, uh, uh, ability of anybody rescuing you from that place. There's no parole. You'll never be paroled out of that place. There's no angels coming to rescue you. The Calvary is never coming. Now, I end with this. When that famous boat, the Titanic, uh, went under, it left port with 1,317 passengers on board. They thought they were going on a nice ride, Sister Jennifer. They thought they were going to their destination. Did you know that of the 13... 117 passengers, 324 of them were first class, 285 of them were second class, and 708 of them were third class. There was 1,680 males on the Titanic, and there was 434 females on the Titanic. They were from every flavor of religion you can think of. There was Baptists there, there was Catholics there, there was Jews there, there was Pentecostals. There was every single kind of person you could think of on the Titanic. But when the news rung around the world that the boat had gone under, the Starline office in Liverpool, England, they made a big old list, and on one side they had a list that said saved, and the other one said lost at sea hallelujah and the families waited there to see if their loved one was on one list or the other here's what I'm trying to tell you God doesn't care where you come from he doesn't care the color of your skin he doesn't care your economic background he does not care any of those things there's only two kinds of people on earth either saved or not saved redeemed or not redeemed serving God or not serving God on the side of God or against God there is no in between there's only two lists Amen. Bible says that when we're born again our name gets written in the Lamb's book of life Amen. oh beloved understand me this evening the most precious thing you have is your salvation Amen. worth more than 50 million dollars worth more than the fame and recognition that this whole world could give you hallelujah if you've been redeemed by the blood you are one of the richest human beings on the face of the earth hallelujah Jesus saved you because he loved you hallelujah and nobody has to go to hell oh blessed be the name of the Lord stand to your feet in the house of God oh Jesus 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 Oh, how you love us, Jesus. How you love us, Jesus. How you love us, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. You know how much Jesus loved you? He willingly went to Calvary for you. He willingly died a terrible death for you. When they laid my Lord over that whipping post, and they pulled out that cat of nine tails, I believe he was thinking about you. When they hung him up on that cross and they began to drive the nails in him, I believe he was thinking about you. I believe he was saying, Lord, I'm, Father, I'm doing this so that Lewis doesn't have to go to hell. I'm doing this so that Jennifer doesn't have to go to hell. I'm doing this so that Jimmy doesn't have to go to hell. I'm doing this for Harold Thomas, doing this for Benita Robles. I'm doing this for Johnny Lincoln. I'm doing it for all of these people so that they would know that I love them and that they don't have to go to hell. Hallelujah. Oh, if you understand what I'm saying tonight, if you've been redeemed by the blood of the lamb, hallelujah. 
Is there any way possible that you could come up here? I know I do it all the time, friends. But it's what I feel led to do. I want as many that can, as many that are grateful that you've been saved by the blood of the Lamb to come up here. Oh, I want you to come up here and just find a place to pray. Tell them, thank you, Lord, for saving me. Lord, I was on my way to hell. I was on my way to eternal damnation. And you stood in the way. And you shook me up and you said, open your eyes. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Beloved, if you've never been born again, tonight is your night. If you've never been born again, tonight is your night. God Almighty is reaching for you. Whether you believe it or not, this is, the lo- this, is a, this is a sermon of love. God in His infinite mercy and His love, He's reaching for you. He's saying, you don't have to go to hell. I paid the price for you. And I can make your sins whiter than the driven snow. Hallelujah. But you must not harden your heart anymore. You must not harden your heart, but you must surrender. Say, God, I won't fight you anymore. I want to serve you all the days of my life. Oh, please do that tonight. I'm begging you tonight. Don't harden your heart. Come to the Savior, for the day will come that you'll remember this service. And you'll say, why did I harden my heart? Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus Look at your people, Lord. Look at them, Lord. They're here because they love you. Hallelujah. Through the storm, Jesus keeps me so completely. I can make it. Over mountains 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. For paying the price we could not afford. For dying a death, a substitutionary death. It should have been you and I on that cross. But he did it for us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Hallelujah. Can we just rejoice in the love of God for a little bit? Can we just rejoice in the love of God for just a little while? Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from every fear. Those who look on him are ready. Never be ashamed, you'll never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard me and saved me from my enemies. The Son of God surrounds his saints, he will deliver. Oh, come and magnify, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Come exalt His name together. Glorify the Lord with me. Never ending 
the Lord is good He'll give you everything He'll give you everything Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Taste and see that the Lord is good. He'll give you everything. Amen. If we've got Jesus, we've got everything, church. If we've got salvation, we've got everything. Hallelujah. Praises be unto God. I don't know about you, but I have rejoiced in the Lord today. Amen. Hallelujah. I've had a good time in the Lord today. I'm looking forward to Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Oh, I made a decision in my mind. I'm not going to call it Easter anymore. I'm going to call it Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Because we are celebrating the resurrection of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Hallelujah. Invite as many people as you can to Resurrection Sunday morning. We're going to have a good, good time. We're going to have good food. Uh, We're going to have some uh, eggs that the kiddos can hide and we'll hide it and they'll find them. Hallelujah. Hopefully this time that other bunch doesn't take them from us. Amen. I believe a couple years ago we hit them all and then they come and they took them all. Hallelujah. So let's pray that that comes the way that it needs to be. Amen. Hallelujah. We'll put Looking Brother Jimmy to out there and he'll watch over them for us. Yes. We'll put Brother Jimmy as a bodyguard over the eggs. Amen. Hallelujah. That'd be a good idea. Him and Brother Lewis. Well, if Brother Lewis is out there, I guarantee you nobody will mess with an egg. Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't God good, church? Isn't God good? We can rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus. Let's dismiss this service in prayer. Uh, yes, brother, you have something to say? Oh, yes. Brother Jimmy, come help us. Brother Ethan, would you help us tonight? Amen. Sister Sheila, what happened? Shh, man. She got blessed. You always remind me, sister. You slipping tonight. Amen. Thank you, Brother Jimmy, for reminding me. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank the Lord for my church. Amen. I thank the Lord for each and every one of you. I want you to know from the bottom of my heart, I love each and every one of you. And I'm not just saying that. I really mean it. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus, thank you for the love of God. Thank you, Lord, that you saved us. Thank you, Lord, for the word of God. Thank you for everything you've done for us, Lord. God, thank you for the jobs that you allow us to have. Thank you for the checks, Lord, that we're able to earn every single week. Lord, we pray that you bless every penny we receive tonight. Lord, that it would be used to further your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Isn't God good? Yes, brother. These young ones that can learn how to play a guitar. Amen. Me, I'm not going to be here forever. Amen. These young ones can learn how to play a guitar. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's a good request. Amen. Amen. Let's pray for our little ones that they pick it up. Amen. That they would have a desire, hallelujah, to help in the, in the worship of the Lord, amen, with instruments. Amen. Yes. I guarantee you, my kids can't get any of that from me. Amen. It had to be the Lord. Hallelujah. But God is able. God is able. God is able. Well, if, that's, if there's nothing else, we'll stand to our feet. We'll dismiss this service in prayer. Amen. I've made an executive decision. We'll go to Texas Burger on 52nd. If you want to join us right after this, a good time of fellowship. Uh, they have excellent banana splits. Amen. I switched away from Dairy Queen. Can you tell? Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for your goodness, for your grace, for your mercy. Lord, let it be known tonight that we love you and we thank you for all that you've done for us, Lord. God, I pray that you go with each and every one of us. Protect us, Lord. Tomorrow we'll be on the streets of Odessa, Lord. We need the angels of God around us protecting us, Lord. And bring us back at the next appointed time ready to worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, church.